Okay, so Tiny CPU is a really small CPU architecture that I made when I was first learning computer architecture just to um, explore it. And I've implemented it on GitHub in a repo called Tiny CPU. But in this video, um, I just want to talk about the architecture itself because one of the things I found annoying when I was learning CPU architecture was that educational instruction sets or simple instruction sets often just included a few too many extra details that made writing programs practical or made the instruction set more realistic at the expense of adding additional complexity that was kind of confusing. So let's just go through this really small architecture. Um, the CPU state really just has four components. There's the PC, the program counter, which tracks what instruction we're at. There's a register file, which is basically just a bunch of registers. There's 32 uh, registers in this architecture. And then there's actually two separate memories. There's an instruction memory and a data memory, which simplifies the um, implementation of a simple CPU because you don't have to look for um, dependencies between the instruction fetch and the data operations, though it does prevent self-modifying programs. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's a register file, there's a program counter, there's instruction memory, and there's data memory. And you could actually make the number of registers and the instruction data memory sizes variable, but I just had them be uh, these sizes shown here, 31, uh, or 32 and 128. And it's 32-bit instructions. There's 32 general purpose 32-bit registers, and there's only six instructions. So there's a no-op instruction, there's a jump instruction, which implements control flow, there's a store instruction, a load instruction, a load immediate or load constant instruction, and an instruction to do arithmetic operations. So let's just take a look. So the no-op opcode is here, and the opcode for all of the instructions is bits 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. So the no-op has no operands because it doesn't do anything. Then there is um, the jump instruction, which uses bits 17 through 31. And all it really does is basically it says, well, it's got a condition register, an opcode, which identifies it as a jump and a location register. So there's actually no calculation. You're just reading from the location register and the condition register. And you say, well, if the register file entry pointed to by the condition register is non-zero, then go to the, or basically set the program counter to be the location, the memory location stored in the register file at entry location register otherwise increment the PC. So otherwise go to the next instruction. Um, and that's the only control flow instruction that we have. So the next operation is store and that takes in two operands as well. And it takes in um, a data register and a memory location register. And all it says is the data memory is going to be, or the data memory location at the value stored in the register file at memory location register is gonna be equal to um, the register file or the value stored at the data register if entry of the register file. And then we're gonna increment the PC. Obviously it's default behavior because we're not doing a jump. Load is uh, sort of the reverse of that, right? So we're gonna set the register file entry indicated by the destination register to the value stored at the address stored in the memory, the indicated memory location register. So. Uh, for example, if the memory location register value is 12 and register 12 holds the value 15, then we're going to set the destination register's value to be whatever is in entry 15 of the data memory. So then there's load immediate, which uh, features you know its opcode, the immediate value or the constant value, and the destination register, and it's just going to set um, the destination register entry in the register file to be the zero extend up to 32 of the value stored in bits 11 to 26. And then there's the arithmetic operation, which uses uh, more bits of the instruction, uh, the available instruction bits than any other instruction. And it's just going to take in two operands. Actually, it might not use operand one if it's a unary op. Um, a result register and an opcode for, or a sub opcode and a code for the ALU operation that we're going to do. And it's going to update the value in the register file. So basically all meaningful computation that's not either a memory or control operation is going to be done through ALU operations. So here's just a layout and Microsoft PowerPoint's kind of botching the layout of some of these instructions. I guess there's just too many squares linked together. But um, yeah, so there's basically uh, no ops. There's operations like jump, load, and store that basically take in to have an op code and then two operands. There's an ALU op and there's a load immediate. And the general guiding principle here is I just try to have one instruction and one format for each function. So there's no 
you know, complicated address calculation built into the loads and stores. Um, there's no different variants of jump instructions. There's no computation in the jump instruction. I've really tried to separate out um, the calculation of values from lookup and manipulation of values in control and memory. So, for example, you know, uh, you know, jumps don't have different variants. It's not jump not equal or jump equal or whatever. You're just comparing um, a condition that's already been computed to zero and then jumping to the indicated location. And that's really the entire instruction set. And if you're interested um, in seeing some implementations, then on my GitHub under tinyCPU, uh, I've got a bunch of different implementations, well, three different implementations of this CPU, um, along with the instruction set. And you know they go from very simple, so first CPU, this directory up here, contains a really simple implementation of the CPU. Um, that takes multiple cycles to complete a single instruction, has no pipelining, has no forwarding. Then there's a pipeline version that can uh, start multiple instructions, but stall if there's a data dependency or a control dependency. And then I've been working on a forwarded implementation, though I haven't actually finished it. But yeah, if you're interested in a really simple CPU architecture that takes away all of the messy details of real architectures um, and just getting a sense of what a really bare bones CPU looks like, um, I think it could be interesting. So uh, please check out this repo and give it a star if you're interested.